name is Rose Michael. I live in Indian Brook First Nation. Well, I do a lot of beadwork, and I've just recently started teaching in, well, I've got Newfoundland uh, in March. Um, so I go out, some of them are older uh, people that want to learn, and youth. I've worked with youth in teaching them how to bead, and then combine classes. So I teach beading, basically. Adult women, I think one man attended one of my classes. Um, I like working with the youth because it's better when they're younger, much easier. But And I've got another group that are a mixture of um, adults and young children. Now, I don't know the age group when I go there. I said it didn't matter what age group they were. So You know, when you do your first class, you think, oh, my God, is this going to work? Are they going to be able to do it? Because I can do something in 20 minutes that's going to take them the full two and a half hours. And they usually accomplish whatever I'm teaching, which is a good feeling. Yeah, they're proud of themselves when they learn that, big time. You know, they can't believe, because they look at it when you start and they go, oh, I'm not going to be able to do that. And then when they actually complete it, it's like, wow, I made that. So they're really proud of themselves, which is good. They need to feel good about it. And I'm not going to be doing it forever. And the more I teach, the better it is, because it doesn't stay with everybody. Not everybody sticks with it, they try it, but you get the ones that will like it and carry on with it. And we need to carry it on because the type of beadwork I do is not out there a lot. And when I go to um, markets and things to sell, that's the first thing they say to me is, we don't see this anymore. And a lot of them do the traditional on fabric and mine is, none of it's on fabric. So they need to learn that, that's part of our culture. It doesn't matter if they're in a circle, I prefer them all at one table because it's much easier to be sitting there to explain. When I teach any type of beadwork, I use huge beads because they're using teeny tiny ones. That way they can see exactly what I'm doing. My beads that I use are like what you see kids make bracelets out of when I'm teaching and, and uh, ribbon through a big needle and they could just follow. And I find they learn really well like that because when you're working with teeny tiny beads and even if you're youtubing. tubing, it's very hard to see them, and you'll find a lot of YouTubers will, are now starting to use the bigger beads to explain what they're doing. So I prefer the big beads when I teach. Because normally the classes are about two and a half hours, and in order to be able to help an individual if, if they need it, I need to have least amount of people. And I usually don't have anybody with me. It's just myself teaching and going around and helping with whatever they need. I've done a lot of different crafts all my life, and for the first time, beading just lets me express myself and you find something you like and then you just run with it. I've done um, eagle feathers that originally went to uh, 31 First Nation detachments for the RCMP. Um, then from there it went to right across Nova Scotia. And from there it was the um, Justice Department, which I have more coming in for that, to do more feathers, which went right across Nova Scotia. And now it's happening in Newfoundland. They just did, um, uh, one of the ladies did them for their detachments. So I find everything I've done, it's, it's grown, and I've been doing this for almost five years. It hasn't been long, but I see a big change in what I'm doing. The demand is there, because I'm starting other ones also for different organizations. You want to learn as much as you can. Um, I don't necessarily find everything from First Nations people, because what I'm doing, a lot of them don't do. And I love YouTubing to look for my own education. I do a lot of that if I want to learn something new. I have to go out there because we don't have many um, women that teach it. Uh, and I, like I said, I do a lot on YouTube when I want to learn something new and work out the kinks so that I can do it easily and explain it in a classroom setting. So they just don't hold enough classroom settings. So you can't, when you take one stitch, there's so much for them to learn but they're not learning it. They're just kind of getting that first step and then they're, it's gone. And that's, that's the sad part. It needs to be continuous. I think our language is extremely important. All our different cultures, the, the basket making, the um, this rabbit sneering, the hunting techniques. I mean, we have them in our school, so we're lucky. But there's not enough of that for our children because... I mean, as simple as what is a CD player or a cassette player, they have no idea. Well, look, it's the same thing in our, our uh, culture. We, as children, if they're not learning that, they don't know it, and it goes, it goes, it's gone. So if you, if it's more in school systems, people that are, are basket makers that are teaching the way we did it from breaking up the ash and the wood shavings for the flowers, 
all that stuff is not there anymore. They come in and everything's pretty much prepared. So when I teach, I let them know everywhere you can possibly get supplies. And here it's very limited. So I think our culture is extremely important. And we really need to have more teachings in it. There's not enough. We didn't get it as kids. We made tissue flowers, which wasn't wooden flowers. But I had an elder tell me that if you can make a tissue flower, you can make a wooden flower. And I was like... Really? So, you know what I mean? We don't have enough of that today. We're getting in in our school, but off reserves, I don't get it. They might get it once a month if they're lucky, somebody coming in. So, I think it's really important. I wish there were more programs out there. Like, I mean, with Kurt, he's lucky we've got the language in there, but we're not getting the crafters out there the way we should. And, I mean, this is the first one I teach for... Um, a group, oh, I don't know what you would call it, an organization getting together, which I'm excited about, and I think we need more of that. I mean, they always bring in basket makers, flower makers, but they forget about the beaters, and uh, they're just as important. Because when I started, you get those little bit of insecurities, you nitpick everything that you do, and then now I look at my work and go, wow, that's beautiful, I did that. And then it goes from wow, and it's it's selling to other people, and then you see them wearing what you've created, and it's it's a good feeling in here. And I could say to myself, I did that. That's awesome. And some people will say you shouldn't teach, but you know what? We need to. That's the problem. We need to teach. We need to give our secrets in whatever we do so that it's carried on. And I think that's really important.